Welcome back to the show. We're just about wrapping up, looking at our time. Unfortunately, we're unable to bring you the reaction from Parliament after uh, the aviation minister designates uh, vetting. Uh, we weren't also able to bring you uh, exit from the vetting of uh, the, the minister for minister designate for inner cities and Zongo uh, development as well. Sincere apologies for that, but we'll bring you all of that in our subsequent uh, bulletins. Joseph Opoku Gakpo is also standing by in Parliament to bring us more on what will happen next. For more news though, you can log on to myjoyonline.com. And uh, before we go though, we have to quickly uh, inform you that uh, the Fair Wages and Salaries Commission, head of the Fair Wages and Salary Com Commission, uh, Mr. Smith Graham, has uh, resigned. He resigned through a letter uh, he sent to uh, President Ekufado a while ago. We can tell you a brief about um, his profile and his contribution perhaps to uh, that commission and I've got the letter here I can go through it quickly it says I humbly write to inform you of my decision to resign as the chief executive of the fair wages and salaries commission effective 9th May 2017 per terms of my letter of appointment and then he gives it a reference dated 22nd December 2011 from the Office of the Public uh, Services Commission, my appointment may be terminated by either party. I beg your pardon for that. Either party by giving three months notice. So his letter is coming three months before he actually resigns. And he says, it was great honor to serve my country as a chief executive of the Fair Wages and Salaries Commission over the last eight years. Join my tenure. I enjoy the support of a dedicated team made up of directors and staff. And he goes on and on and on. Like I said, we'll bring you a lot more on that in our subsequent um, bulletins. But if I can go over his uh, brief profile, George Smith Graham, that's the full name, as the implementation. He was in charge of the implementation of the single spine salary structure, successfully migrated all public institutions onto the single spine uh, salary. And he's worked with the DVLA, the EPA, etc. So, like I said, we'll bring you a, a, a bit more on that in our subsequent bulletin. bulletin. Next to be vetted in Parliament is Kofi uh, Damisi, who is Minister-Designate. Uh, well, the vetting actually has started, and so we'll just cross over quickly uh, to Parliament so you can have a feel of what's going on. My name is Gifty Andopia. This has been The Pause. Many thanks for your time. Mm also regional minister. But uh, on some occasions, I also contested as the parliamentary candidate for Kitunov. And uh, I'm also a uh, member of the National Council of the New Patriotic Party. Uh, I, was, I am also uh, the chairman of the transition team, subcommittee on chieftaincy and religious affairs. Okay. Um, first, let me be sure. You were giving a template by the. Were you? Did you guide yourself by the template we give you? Yes, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I did my best. <laughs> I don't know. You do not appear to have followed our template. So, some of the information. But let me ask. For example, immediately after marital status you get you have education diploma saf strategic marketing and personal support france 1993 uh, i'm not sure where that belongs in your arrangement you see that you start from primary school come all up to 2009 uh, and then 2003, Freddie Dogma Foundation, and, and then you go to 1993. So um, that's what I was asking about following the template. Some of the arrangements are mixed up. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Sorry for that. I think it was maybe, um, you know, some error. But uh, whilst I was working with Air Liquid, that was the time uh, I went to France 
to undertake that course. The, you are going to the Ministry of Chieftaincy, but you chaired the Committee on Religion and the Chieftaincy. But you have not told us what religion you practice. Are you a voodoo man or...? Uh, thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I'm a Christian. I was baptized with the Evangelical Presbyterian Church. Uh, thank you very much, Mr. Chairman, and uh, congratulations, Mr. Jamesi. I will ask you to help us with a uh, true and proper rendition of your name. You have on your CV Samuel Kofi Ahiave Jamesi. But the communication we have from His Excellency the President, dated 17 January 2017, we were provided with Honorable Kofi Jamesi. So we would like to know for the consistency of our records, which of these names should we use? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I think in my political life, I've always been called Kofi Jamesi, Kofi Jamesi. But my full name, is Samuel Kufi Ayave Jamesi. I'm the same very man. Thank you. And that is the official name yes, that sir. we should use. Okay, yes. thank you very much. Uh, you, your BSc, you only have BSc on engineering. You don't specify what kind of engineering program. Can you please tell this committee? Well, I just said it, it's mechanical engineering. And um, you have your MBA into bracket student, Leicester University. Um, are you still a student? Leist, is it the Leicester in the United Kingdom? And you don't tell us when you started, when you will, you hope to end. Can you please throw some light on this entry? Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Leicester University runs MBA courses in Ghana here. And I'm a student in Ghana here. I started in 2010. And uh, I'm still a student. Uh, at a point, I stopped, but I hope to continue to finish very quickly. Yeah. You also have not aided us with the uh, specific periods of your academic pursuits, your A-level, no year, when you started, when you ended, level say middle school primary school can you please help us with the specific years that's why chairman was talking about the template we provided if um, you had averted your mind to the template it would have been easier for us can you please help us with the year you entered and completed these various programs thank you very much thank you mr chairman secondary school was from 1972 to 78 and uh, A level is 79 to 80. Accra Academy. Chairman, so uh, I have it. So second, A level was not secondary school. Oh, it's secondary school. Ah, OK. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> and Chairman, just a slight follow up to the Honorable Kujato. Are you suggesting to this committee that you be a student minister? <laughs> Uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, education has no end. And uh, uh, even at the age of 70, people are still students. As we work, we learn also, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. <laughs> so please continue with the, the years. You were at A level. <laughs> yes, so I completed A level in 1980 and went to the university 81 up to 86. And uh, that's it, yeah. Can you please help us with the period you were CEO for Skoja Limited? And do we have your permission to 
amend, Minister of State, I assume that you ended with the end of the tenure of President Kufuor since January 2009 instead of 2008 as you have here. Or were you reshuffled at some point in 2008? Can you uh, clarify that entry? 2008, we lost the election and the new government took over 2009. So I think that was a, that's a small error. Uh, thank you. And after that, so I went back to private business, yes. So page two of your CV, do we have your permission to expunge? If you look at your CV, you don't have a copy there. The first statement you have there, special area of experience relevant to the job you applied for. I, did, did you apply for this job? I don't know what that is doing there. Which job, Mr. Chairman? Uh, is in your CV special area of experience relevant to the job you applied? <laughs> so you applied to President Nana Kufado to be Minister for <laughs> Chieftaincy and Culture. Is that the case? Sorry, sorry, Mr. Chairman. I think that's also uh, a mistake. I don't know. Is that and the final error. could you to just indulge me further. And just there, 2001 to 2004, Deputy Minister of State, Deputy Regional Minister of the Volta Region, you've gone further to provide responsibilities, assisting the Regional Minister in the political administration of the region. So apart from political administration, you are not doing anything, and you are not assisting the President in any way. Is that the case? You are just serving a Regional Minister. Mr. Chairman, no. The position of a regional minister is he is the president's representative of the region. So anything that the regional minister does presupposes that he's doing it for the president of the Republic of Ghana. So as, assist, as a, a deputy minister, my job is to assist him to ensure that there's proper running of that region. Thank you. Okay. I, think, I think to make it easier for us, we'll go on with the vetting, but you will resubmit this information in line with the template, the guidelines we gave you, so that uh, you're giving us some information we don't need but you will be able to con con uh, confine yourself to the information we have requested. But we'll proceed so that we don't spend too much time on, on this CV. Yes. Yeah. So. Yes. Chairman, I get your guidance, but just to help him to improve the CV, Subcommittee of Transition Team on Chieftaincy certainly could not be 2016. I believe you are referring to 2017. Uh, chairman of uh, subcommittee of manifesto, which party's manifesto? Certainly, you didn't take my part in my party manifesto or the PNC manifesto, so you should define that. But take note and uh, where you are improving. No, but the chairman, chairman, the transition started 2016, yes, so that one is correct. <laughs> and uh, um, chairman of the subcommittee on the manifesto to started 2016. I was also chairman of the manifesto subcommittee. Um, Honorable James, he was talking about which party's manifesto. Oh, so <laughs> thank you very much. Uh -huh. I yes. will amend that part. Please. <laughs> so please uh, reorganize in accordance with the request we have made of you to make it easier for us. But, yes, sir. but we'll proceed. Honorable Neil and Tevan Dupoy will start with you. develop policies to support religious bodies. You need to know where they are, isn't it? But now, you say you will not register them. How will you locate them? But what is more important now is that you have some prophets who have been prophesizing. They will do prophets. What are you going to do about it? Because it creates fear and panic among people, and people live in fear before they die. It's not good.
Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, it is true that sometimes along the way you might meet some charlatans who bear the way they organize their churches is not the best way. Uh, but as I said, almost all the churches in this country have conducted themselves very well. And when I met the Christian Council, they are even willing to assist that any time they see a particular church going astray, they will draw our attention so that we could work it out in a manner that uh, will be conducive to our uh, lives. Yes, sir. One question. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Congratulations, Honorable Minister Designate. Mr. Minister to be, <laughs> how are you going to help restore some of the dignities, the lost dignity among some of the chiefs, so that at least through litigations, so that they can start uh, taking charge of the little issues that comes out in the society instead of every issue, little issue is taken to court and stuff like that to crowd the courts and they take longer time to settle though. So what measures are we going to do to get those things? Because when they lost their dignity, sometimes people doesn't want to go. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. You see, because of the, the eminence of the chiefs, that is why they have institutions and bodies to take care of them. Every chief who belongs to a traditional council should believe in the traditional council. And for that matter, if there are issues pertaining to the chieftaincy in his area, and he sends it to the traditional council, he should have belief that the judicial committee of that council will be willing and ready to assist in the resolution of that problem. So I think that uh, the chiefs themselves should uphold the structure that has been developed and is working very well for them. If they do so, I think we'll, we'll be somewhere. Thank you. Um, Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Um, maybe before I ask my first question, Mr. Chairman, I would like you to help me find out from the nominee if uh, Hajj Affairs will be under his ministry, before I ask my first question. Hajj, Hajj is a... Uh, okay. I, I, I... I, <laughs> no, I, I already have three questions, and I don't uh, so want that to be my first question. Persuade chairman. That's why I'm, you that's want why I'm, to I'm pleading with chairman. With three questions. Yes. Yes, I want to proceed with three it's questions. But before my first question, for his consideration. Yeah. <laughs> Honorable Suheni, please go on with your question. Okay. So um, I'll put that aside for now. I am a firm believer that um, through religion and chieftaincy, we can get a lot of our developmental needs sorted out. This is because if you look at how we revere our pastors and our imams and how often we visit them and take their advice if they were to lead in you know uh, urging us to do the right things as citizens we will get a lot of results same with our chieftaincy institution even in the area of land management taxes for example recently in the ashanti region when they were doing the asante Hima, Festival, just I mean f f funeral celebration. Just because the chief, the king announced that nobody should go out at some particular time, people didn't go out. In Tamale, we had a Sakawa situation. When they dared the security, it took the traditional authority to bring sanity back. So, how are you going to integrate these institutions, religious institutions, and the chieftaincy institution into the national development agenda? <clears throat> uh, 
Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, actually, he has, solved, he has solved one of the problems. He has solved one of my problems. Because a lot of people were asking, uh, why the Ministry of Chieftaincy and Religious Affairs? And, uh, but the answer is what you have given. The answer is this. You go to every town or every village. If you go there, the first person who wields a lot of influence is the chief. The next person in line is the pastor, the imam, or the chief priest sitting down somewhere. So if you have a government agenda, and you want that agenda to succeed in that particular village, you got to take care of these people. So that is why my ministry is as such. And uh, 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 we'll make sure that we take care of these two group of people in a manner that our agenda will be very successful. Thank you. Even when pastors ask us to leave the hospital for treatment, we do. You know, but that's just by the way. The second question. In 2008, thereabout, when you were a regional minister in the Volta region, something happened and it created a lot of panic in this country. It was even suggested that you were to be assassinated. And our leader, uh, deputy minority leader, was even charged of being behind that assassination attempt. I'm talking about Honorable James uh, Afeji. In the whole melee, a young man was shot and killed in your residence. I understand this was a young man who visited you often. And according to some people, it was one of his usual visits, but it was misinterpreted and he was killed. His parents are still alive. Now, that, I'm told, even has the potential of sparking its own traditional conflict. And you've already talked about the number of conflicts that you are inheriting. How did you deal with that? Or how are you dealing with that? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. You just said the issue happened in 2008. And until now, the matter is before court. Uh, I am not a party to the suit in court because I was not there when the issue occurred. So I am not a party to that issue and I'm not in court. But that matter is in court, it's still in court. I happened in your residence? Yes. Okay. But in my absence. Okay. And my last question. My last question. You, I'm sure you are very familiar with um, the um, conflict in uh, uh, Anlo. That's a Juje and Anlo. Uh, because you are a Joji, you are a citizen of uh, a son of Joji, I understand. Uh, yeah, yeah. How are you going to resolve the chieftaincy problem uh, or dispute in Joji concerning who really is a paramount? Because you have to, I'm sure, demonstrate your ability, you know, to manage some of these things at home so that you can get some I don't remember. outside. If yes. you can ask another question, he will not be directly involved in resolving an issue. Whatever it is to be at the regional House of Chiefs. So please ask another question. Okay, thank you. Um, now, Hajj is one of the five pillars of Islam. It is very dear to the hearts of Muslims. And it is one you know, pilgrimage that every Muslim wishes to undertake before he departs or she departs from this earth. And since your ministry is in charge is of religious affairs, and you talked about key religious affairs, this is a serious religious affair. I mean, what assurance are you giving us that the improvements the operations have seen over the years, especially from 2009 till date, will be continued? if it is under your supervision. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, 
the problem, the main problem associated with Hajj organization is the timing. Uh, many times, uh, due to uh, timing problems, uh, it's only when the Hajj is getting so close before, you know, uh, organization and all that for people to be able to go to, go to Mecca. Uh, fortunately, this year, uh, His Excellency the President has instituted a committee uh, which will deal with the Hajj issue as early as possible so that all those issues can be dealt with so that this year's Hajj is going to be a very smooth one. Uh, with me at the Ministry of uh, Religious Affairs, will ensure that we facilitate as much as possible uh, the Hajj program and make sure that it is very successful. And not only Hajj, we also intend uh, for the sake of our Christian brothers to also institute a pilgrimage committee uh, for Christians also to visit uh, the Holy Land. So these things will be done. Thank you. All right. Um, the ranking member has asked for one space for you, so I'll give that to you. Thank you very much. The ranking has signaled that I can make it too. Yeah, thank you very much. Thank you. Very um, much. I take note of the fact that you compete. You are challenging the chairman's rule. Oh, not at all. The not chairman's all. ruling still stands. Oh, because you offered you... one opportunity, please. <laughs> But, but Chairman, you gave everybody two at least. <laughs> um, I'll make it two in one then to satisfy the Chairman and my ranking member. <laughs> um, congratulations, Honorable Jamesi. Uh, there are those who hold a view that the state and religion should not mix. The state should not get involved in religious matters. Uh, some philosophers have even said politics and the pulpit should not mix. It will be a toxic mix. Um, this is the first time Ghana is going to have a minister or a ministry for religious affairs. How do you respond to those who are uh, quite uneasy about this new development. Considering that Ghana is a secular state, there are those who do not belong to any religion at all, and may be feeling that by the creation of this ministry, there is some discrimination going on, uh, contrary to Article 17.2, which speaks against discrimination on all forms, be it on religious grounds, creed, ethnic, and uh, all of that. So how do you respond to those who are quite uneasy about this attempt by the state to now get involved in uh, religious matters so officially and so formally. And while you are that, I would also want to hear from you on how you can create a sense of um, unity and belongingness and non-discrimination amongst traditional areas. There's a certain sense in this country that some traditional areas, we respect them, we respect their paramount chiefs, their chiefs, what they say is final and all of that. But other places, we don't give them that same reverence. Very soon there will be a ban on drumming and dancing in the greater Accra region. Often we have seen that that is flouted. We have just seen how beautifully uh, Asante man respected the tomb force at Santihini. And what happened was very beautiful. And we all, you know, really, uh, you know, enjoyed, basked in that, in, that, in, that, in that culture. So the second part of my question is, how do you assure this nation that you use your ministry to uh, generate a certain sense of equality that every traditional area will have their practices and their conventions respected by the state, by those who live there, and everybody, so that there will be some equality. So these are my questions. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I give you the assurance. I give you the assurance. Every paramancy 
It's a paramancy. If you look at the chieftaincy act, a paramount chief is a paramount chief, irrespective of where he comes from. And so, therefore, if one system is being respected, why not the other? So that we will ensure. We we'll work very hard towards it. Number two, uh, for religious affairs, not everybody will be willing to uh, to accept the fact that government wants to ensure that religious activities in this country are free and fair. Of course, there are other people uh, owing to certain uh, aspects of what they believe in might not be interested. And we are talking about the majority. As long as we have the majority behind us, I think that we can manage this situation. Yes, sir. Thank you. Now you had two questions. Uh, all right. Now, um, Honorable Ranking Member. Chairman, let me also congratulate Samuel Kofi Jamasi on his nomination as Minister Designate for Chieftaincy and Religious uh, Affairs. And Chairman, even before I proceed with my question, to note that we in the minority, we have a very, very strong position that any attempt to regulate the free practice of religion, which is inherent in your appointment, will be, as the Honorable Blacker noted in Thomas Jefferson West, separating church and state. Inherent in it will be some powers exercised by you, either by policy or by legislation, to regulate religious practice. In our mind, we are absolutely convinced that the president can appoint you as minister for chieftaincy and some other affairs, but certainly not chieftaincy and religious affairs. It is not a domain which ought to be regulated by policy or by religion. It should be left to the First Amendment Clause of the US, a free exercise of person's faith. But be as it may, you are a minister. Should we believe you, in 2005, when you appeared before the Appointments Committee, you promised that a police station will be set up at Chito, and you promised setting up an educational fund. Has that been achieved? Uh, <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, the educational fund was actually established at the Regional Coordinating Council. I don't know what, how it is being run now, but it was established. And uh, I think if you check up the records, you will see or you find out that it is there. Uh, as for the establishment of the police station, uh, I have to recollect my mind a little bit. Uh, maybe either it has been done or not been done. It's quite a little bit of a long time. Mm. Thank you. Chairman, have you been able to, as minister and as a prominent citizen of the Volta region, how much did you contribute to reduce illiteracy in that region as you pledged again in 2005? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, education in the Volta region uh, is a very vigorous one. Uh, and in fact, if you look at the voter region, uh, sometimes it's difficult to take the statistics because we see the performance on, at the southern level, the middle level, and the northern level. But I can say that during our time, uh, there was a significant improvement. I don't have the figures, but I know, uh, as I recollect, that uh, there was a, a major improvement in the educational standards of the students. Yes, sir. Chairman, this one is now in the domain probably of the minister designate tomorrow. You are very passionate about the appointment of legal officers to the regional house of chiefs. Then, will you do that now and when? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. 
uh, this is something that is extremely necessary, especially having to do with the speedy resolution of disputes. Most of the regional House of Chiefs don't have legal counsels, and this I'll take up very seriously if I'm giving the nod, so that we can uh, try as much as possible to reduce the disputes that we have. Thank you. Chairman, thank you. You mentioned that you are inheriting 352 conflicts. Does that include the very recent ga Manche conflict where a, a particular ga Manche had been installed and gazetted near Adama as I, like Adama as I understand, and there is a current development in that. What will you do to ensure peace within the Ga traditional council vis-a-vis -vis this new development? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. The current issue is not amongst the 352. It just happened. And uh, I even read it in the newspapers. Uh, but uh, I can assure you that I'm, if I'm giving the note, uh, these are issues that we're going to tackle very seriously. We need peace. This is our national capital. Therefore, there must be peace for everybody uh, to go about his or her work you know, in a very uh, peaceful manner. So I will deal with that issue uh, uh, the way it should be. Uh, I will advise that every chief who has a problem should actually get to the traditional council for the resolution of the problem. Uh, the ministry actually is not involved in the strict uh, chief taxi issues. The ministry doesn't install chiefs, it doesn't uh, adore chiefs, but wherever there are problems, the ministry will facilitate the judicial committee to resolve the issue. Uh -huh. So this one is all part of the 352, uh, Mr. Chama. <laughs> so Chama, he now has 353. If he continues, so I will yes. keep counting <laughs> up till uh, tomorrow. But Chama, as I indicated, the honorable nominee is a proud son of uh, Ketu North. Georgia, I hope I got the name right. Charity, they say, begins at home. In your own corridor is a major chieftaincy dispute. I have already overruled that question. So I make rule of you. Oh, you can rule, Chairman. I've overruled uh, that Because question. I've already asked the question. <laughs> I, oh, I Chairman, have... is it not better for the nominee to say he's staying off than you overruling it? Because how can I trust that he can remove the spoke in my eyes if he cannot do that of his own in, in Georgia? But Chairman, since we are subject to Chairman's uh, guidance, I still stand by my question yet to be cancelled by the Chairman. <laughs> well, I have ruled earlier that because whatever dispute there is in Georgia will be handled by either the traditional council or the House of Chiefs, we should not burden him with any views or comments which may prejudice the proceedings over there. So which other chief tenancy conflict should we burden you with? Chama, <laughs> 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 will the nominee continue with an initiative of the previous government of payment of allowances to chiefs, and in particular, queen mothers, and getting them officially gazetted and recognized. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, as we speak, it is better for me to put this in the public domain, that a paramount chief, as of now, takes only 500 Ghana cities. Once a queen mother takes 350 Ghana cities a month as an allowance, uh, we believe that uh, is inadequate. And, uh, but it all depends on the budget and the avail availability of funds. But it is my belief that it is inadequate. And if funds are available, uh, we should try and enhance uh, or increase that money, as has been done 
by the previous government. Yes. Chairman, will the nominee give an indication how much he intends to enhance those allowances for chiefs and queen mothers? You can give us a range. Maybe those at 500 can I expect 1,000. Those at 300 can expect 600. Do you have a range? Because the budget for 2017 has been prepared so that you can put some smiles on the faces of our sacrificing uh, chiefs and queen mothers. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I will consult the Minister of Finance so that we see the way forward. Thank you. Since you will be responsible for Chief Tensi, and I noted that you had run your own commentary guided by the past minister to run a royal college. Yeah. Uh, Dr. <laughs> Dr. Dr. Chris Abuchi, a very brilliant sociologist, is still available. He shares the view that the chieftaincy institution is anachronistic. And his argument is that as you used to perform judicial, quasi-administrative functions, that has been taken away by modernity. Do you share that position? Yes, Mr. Chairman, I share that position. And that is the more reason why I believe that every chief in this country should be on top of his uh, uh, position as a chief. And that is the more reason why, uh, if I get to know the professor you are talking about, uh, uh, I think it will be much useful to us at the ministry. Yes, Chairman, he has very good resource person. You have Professor J.K. Nukunya. Uh, who's written extensively on chieftaincy. I'm sure the Honorable Senior Bafo, uh, Bafo will uh, help you with that. There was the issue of gazetting of traditional lineages in terms of land ownership across the country. Do you intend to follow to get these succession plans worked on in order to reduce the numerous chieftaincy disputes? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Yes. Uh, the research department has also done a lot of, of jobs concerning a code of secession. Uh, it is one sure way of actually reducing disputes in this country. Uh, it is that such, uh, you know, there are certain traditional areas that are very peaceful and uh, uh, it's easier for you to handle the code of the succession in those very traditional areas. I think that uh, we have to take them on very quickly because they are already peaceful. Why is tackling the more difficult ones? And uh, to add to that, uh, I also believe that it is necessary that uh, we delineate the traditional areas because normally um, you can have some chief transit disputes but end up in land disputes. And uh, you will find one chief like it happened in Kunya Lavanyo. These are things that we think if we have enough resources, we can be able to delineate the various traditional areas. Everybody knows that this is my boundary. This is where my traditional area is. And I think that will bring a lot of peace in this country. Thank you. I, Chairman, I heard President Nana Kufuado in Yendi and somewhere in Tamale and probably somewhere in the Volta region. Can you assure this committee of non-political interference in the enskinment, disenskinment, and distillment of chiefs? <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I hold that view. Uh, the ministry is not to install or enskin, or distill, or uh, things of that nature, as I have said earlier on, and that we'll do our best not to engage ourselves in that particular aspect of the chief dancing. Thank you. Chairman, finally, is to wish the nominee well, but like I indicated on behalf of the minority, we take a very strong view of any attempt to regulate either through policy or legislation or administrative action matters pertaining to the exercise of religion. And we think that in Ghana, religious people are practicing very well. We are benefiting from coexistence. And therefore, be guided cautiously 
as you follow your own 2005 footsteps. There were accusations of you interfering with the apostolic uh, 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 revelation society, which is a religious uh, group, which was petitioned at the time. But we, we hold strongly that this sensitive, emotive issue of religion should not be regulated by way of the creation of a ministry dedicated to that. But Chief Minister for Chieftaincy, why not? Minister for Chieftaincy and other affairs, why not? Chairman, I'm done. Thank you. Thank you very much. I accept that I think that religion has always been part of the mandate of culture, and it will continue to be. The fact that we called it religion by its name does not change anything. If you go to the Ministry of uh, Chieftaincy on Culture, they had the part which dealt with religion. So it's not new. But I have one challenge which I'm sure facing all chiefs who have landed property. Um, in Article 267, Clause 6A, it is provided that um, revenue accruing from two lands shall be paid to the Office of the Administrator of two lands to cover administrative expenses, and the remaining revenue shall be disbursed in, in the following proportions. A, 25% of the stool through traditional authority for the maintenance of stool in keeping with its status, 20% to the traditional authority, and 55% to the district assembly within the area of authority of, of which the stool lands are situated. Now the challenge is this, for every hundred cities that accrued from stool lands. Ten percent is retained by the administrator of stool lands. Fifty-five percent goes to the municipal district assembly for development of the area. Only twenty-five, uh, thirty-five percent is reserved for the traditional council and for the chief. And yet, on every occasion, the youth and some people are attacking the chiefs for that little piece that is reserved for the traditional council and for the maintenance of the chiefs. How are we going to ensure that the chiefs are protected and the community's development challenges are directed to the assembly where the bulk of the money goes? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Unfortunately, the Stool Land Administration is not under my ministry. It is under the Ministry of Lands and Natural Resources. I wish it were under my ministry. But I, but I, I hold your view that uh, uh, this needs a lot of education. Uh, there are a lot of people who don't know that this is the percentages paid to the various bodies as concerning stool lands. I hope that uh, the education will be improved upon for people to understand. But that ministry is not under my ministry. A lot of chiefs, uh, whenever they have problems with their royalties, rather come to the ministry of chieftaincy. That is what my predecessor, my predecessor informed me about. A lot of chiefs rather come. And then from there, he, the minister of chieftaincy, will have to go to the ministry of lands.